All right, here is another extremely important topic. I'm sure I say that on every topic, but <laughs> if it wasn't, we wouldn't put it in here. And if it wasn't something that we've seen restoration company after restoration company after restoration company forget to do or neglect to do over the last five to 10 years, okay? So I kind of put these two together, uh, setting up containment and protecting of contents and furniture and the property. I kind of put them all together because it's just a lot of plastic, basically, if you if you put it that way, uh, for the most part. But again, I'm going to refer you back to the training you went to on how to set up proper containments. I'm going to show you a couple of easy, simple photos, but these are just photos from jobs. But go back to your trainings that you've been to to set up proper containments um, that were going to be very helpful. But it's more about making sure you're doing it when you should and when you can and then documenting it with photos and then billing for it because literally just setting up proper containment, drying chambers and protecting materials, furniture, things like that, flooring can seriously add between $300 and $2,000 per job. And I know that sounds a little extreme, but it's not, okay? I just reviewed three estimates for one of our clients that we've had for quite some time and they didn't have any of this on there. Okay, they had content manipulation. So they hourly charge for moving the contents, but there was no protecting, there was no blocking, um, and there was no containment set up. And these were category three jobs. So probably between $300 and $1,000 on just those jobs that I looked through this morning. Uh, and this is a client we've been working for a while, but you get busy and you forget, but there's huge profits. And the other thing is your job sites will look so nice and you're going to get more referrals. So let me get into this before I, I guess I just got to get off my soapbox here, but here we go. So setting up your containments, drying chambers, you learn this in all of your training. They want you to set up drying chambers in your moisture mapping and in your in circle and hydro in Mika, all the different prop, uh, programs you could use for drying, for putting in the right amount of dehumidifiers and air scrubbers and air movers and just everything. It all comes down to putting those drying chambers up and putting the plastic up. Um, remember, containment plastic, as you're setting that up, charges a lot more than protecting. Okay, and we'll show you some examples of that. But it keeps the dust out of the, uh, keeps the dust in the affected areas. It keeps the debris and everything that you're cleaning up in those affected areas so the homeowner, if possible, can still function in the rest of the house. It also keeps them out of your work area. And I know that might sound kind of rude a little bit, but it's best for everybody if they're not going in and out of these areas where the air movers and the dust and everything is blowing around because we should have proper containments up, proper air scrubbers and things like that, but also try to keep them out of these affected areas if possible. And setting up the, the, the plastic uh, with the, the, usually the four mil or six mil, whatever you're using is very profitable. Okay, and I'll show you those rates here in just a minute. All right, the second part of this is the protecting of the property and the contents. All right, so what it looks extremely professional, of course, you have less liability. You're not getting accused of scratching the floor or the wood floors or um, maybe furniture or getting dust all over furniture or ruining the TV or whatever it is. Uh, it just looks professional. Um, eventually, as you get used to doing the content manipulation and then the blocking in the furniture and then the protecting of everything and the inventorying and the packing out and the packing back in, Pretty soon, you're going to start to find out that these water losses, which a lot of you don't even realize, have the potential to turn into content jobs. And a lot of our larger clients, we did a, um, a workshop with a contents company in California a couple of years ago. A lot of people went to that. And since they went to that, they are now billing a quarter of a million, a half a million or over a million dollars a year just in the contents because the insurance company doesn't want the liability of these getting ruined. They also need the contents out, okay, really packed out of the area if there's any remodeling or rebuild that's going to happen. So you can start to have a mitigation water loss bill, and then you can also have a contents portion of that, okay? So we can get into that separately if you want some individual help. Um, so again, it's very, very profitable for you to use this. So let me give you some examples. Let me switch over really fast to... Uh, 
teachable here. Just a few little quick photos of setting up some plastic to set up to to section off this kitchen. Again, I want you to go back to full containment and learn how to set those process those uh, containments up properly in your classes that you've been to. But it just gets missed all the time. Here's a little bit more of uh, more of a basement setup. Here's a doorway being done. Uh, here's someone just putting a flap. Every just little different ways, but all of this plastic that you're using is going to bill if it's for containment. Usually, it's over a dollar a square foot. So if you buy a 10 by 100 roll from a Ramsco, for example, and I apologize, I do not know what that price is currently, um, but whatever that price is, then you're going to be about a dollar to a dollar 10 or so a square foot for setting up containment. So now all of a sudden you're at a thousand dollars or so. Maybe your area is a little bit less, maybe it's six or seven hundred dollars. But for a 60 to a hundred dollar investment for a roll of plastic, you're now billing at 600, 800 or over a thousand dollars for that plastic. Plus, it looks really good. Plus, your drying chamber is going to look better and work better. Okay, zip poles. I always tell people on the zip poles, you're going to charge for the zip pole each day. But the thing is, they're they're going to get broke and they're going to lose them a lot. So hopefully, you'll just recoup your money. Now, I have liked these zip poles a little better. These ones with the little footstool on the bottom. Just to ask your Ramsco rep which one is available that, that they feel is best. These are definitely been heavy, more heavy duty. Uh, haven't been breaking like... Let me see if I've got a picture of one here. Oh, these I've got all the newer ones here. There's some of the older ones. And I'm not trying to diss on that brand, but the tops fall off a lot and they break more often than I've seen with this, this brand here. So, all right, going down to the protecting of contents and flooring. There's a lot of different, here's your line items here, example of a bill, but you can wrap like this, okay? or you can cover certain areas like this. And this is a little more creative. I'm not saying this is the way to do it, but one of my clients just started plasticking off. This is actually a uh, painter's plastic. They kept the uh, art on the wall and just painter plastic around it. Uh, they went around here where all the tech TV devices and electronic things were gonna be. You can use RAM board, uh, especially going downstairs so it's not slippery. Carpet shield, of course. Remember guys, we're not putting this on wood floor. But here's a simple one that gets missed all the time. Just simple, maybe four mil plastic, uh, hanging it down here to cover up all these appliances here in this kitchen as you're walking in and out. Simple, easy way. Again, there's you can go real extensive and then you can do nothing. And so I'm trying to give you some information of, of what will work. Now, I did include, this is a photo of a hotel that I actually stayed at. Uh, and I saw the air movers down there and they had not put zip pulls up. And sure enough, their plastic had fallen down and so it wasn't being real effective. So the importance of the plastic and the zip holes. But again, the purpose of this video is to help you focus on that training that you received as you were getting into the industry of setting up proper drying chambers and keeping out. Let me just kind of go back to, as a review here really fast. Uh, let's see here. Right here's this one. OK, but uh, just setting up the drying chambers, keeping the dust out of the affected areas, keeping the clients out of your work area, and then going back here, it looks professional, less liability on the contents. Eventually, if you'll trust me on this, you'll start to figure out that, wow, you might actually start making more money on the content part of the water loss than the actual water loss. And a lot of our clients end up making between 30 and 50% net profit on the content part of the job as well. So as you grow, that can be very uh, profitable for you as well. Again, hopefully this has been, a, hopefully somehow I've gotten you to realize that there is so much money here to be made and you're just going to look so much more professional than your competition. The adjusters, the agents, the plumbers, friends, family, everybody's going to see these job sites and go, wow, this is nice. And we have found very little resistance with insurance companies when it comes to protecting the property, protecting the contents and setting up those drying chambers. So hopefully this help, tip has helped you. If you need additional help from us, let us know and we'll get you going with some training. Thanks.